got my shooting table here. My chair sunk into the ground a little bit. I feel like I'm really low. Anyways, it's a little rainy outside, so hopefully the rain stays off for the moment. I just got in the mail, what I'm like 99% sure, is a pack of five Colombian surplus machetes. Sportsman's Guide was running a special, I don't know if it's special, they're running these $35 for a five pack of machetes. I want these actually not to cut through bush, we don't really have a ton of bushes out here, but to do fire suppression on the trees. On the majority of these trees here around the house, they've already been worked on, but some of the other ones, what happens is the branches that are low to the ground, they die off, and for fire safety, it's beneficial to whack those off, lop them off, so that if there's a brush fire, the tree doesn't catch on fire. Anyways, I'm excited to see what I've got. $35 just seemed like a good price. Uh, I can't say I've ever had any Colombian made products or knives before, so I'm curious to see what the build quality is and if they're actually made in Colombia. So let's open this up and take a look. Uh, got this cut open, and let's see what we've got. I'm seeing an orange handle in there, which is not super exciting. I kind of dig the wooden steel. Oh, I think only one of these is even wood. Let's see, let's pull out the one wood one. Ooh, or not, let's see. Maybe this top plastic orange one. All right. Uh, this one definitely is Colombian surplus. It is Gavilan de Incoma, Colombia, C-18-K. And it definitely looks to be like it's surplus. And man, I don't know how stainless steel this because it's definitely got a little bit of rust on it. Whoa, this edge is rough too. Yikes. Can you see this at all? See no focus in on that? I don't know. But this is not the best craftsmanship. Plunge line is horrendous. You've got a ooh, solid centimeter between the left and right plunge grinds on here. Definitely made in Colombia though. Which is kind of cool. The plastic handle on here is... It's not too bad. This section right here, actually, just doing those little swings. I don't know if you can see this. Look at the mating surfaces on this. So right here, it's flush. My camera here. Right here, it's flush. And then down here, you've got, I don't know, 16th inch of a gap. And those kind of dig into you and you're swinging just in this little <laughs> that I've done. The edge on this is rounded. I can feel this is a giant burr. I think they probably ground this in with a super rough grit just as like a Scandi grind, which is totally what you want in a... Oh my gosh, this is <laughs> this is so bad. Look at this side. You've got like a, a relatively shallow bevel and then you've got a rough secondary bevel. But on this side, you just have the one bevel. Rough, rough. Got kind of an interesting shape on a machete though, this spear point. I don't think I've actually seen that before. The tip is not sharp. Not in the least bit. Kind of interesting. Well, not super uh, impressed with the quality of this. This is, I think, the Harbor Freight one, which I feel like I need to go buy the Harbor Freight one for $5 and bring it and do a comparison because it might be better than this. This is, this is pretty rough. Let's take a look at the next one. Moving on, let's see what else comes out. Let's get to your other plastic handled one. All right, this is kind of a, a more traditional style. This is kind of what you think of a machete. Very traditional. Is it Colombian? It is, I think. Yeah. Colombia, it is a chispas. Trace canales. Three burrs, three canals. I don't know, I don't speak Spanish. But both of these appear to be new ish i don't think they've been used they both have their stickers on here um this is like i said your more traditional style it's kind of got a, a nice nick in right here on the handle that's nothing too bad this is interesting in that it's not necessarily a full tang completely you know as this one you can see the the tang of the of the blade this one it is molded over with this grip uh, one thing that's killing me about this grip already, you can just get a good feel, is this section right here, where your hand goes, it digs in. That's not comfortable at all. 
I don't know how thick this material, you know, if you tried to ground this to shape, you might just go straight through this plastic. I don't know how thick it is. They're riveted in place. Let's see the grind on this. Is it sharp at all? No, it's not even remotely. Oh my gosh, guys. The grinds on these are rough. So this literally still has stock. I mean, they aren't even, they're not even meeting. So this one has um, a very rough burr. But at least the two edges, the two bevels come to meet. These ones aren't even meeting yet. Like literally there's no, there's no edge here. Not even remotely. This is bad. And you can see up at the top here. It's in, I don't know if it's in camera, I can't see. Anyways, the bevel doesn't even go to the tip. It's, not even, it's completely unground up here, which I mean, I guess you don't really use that section. But it's just sloppy. And if you'll notice, the choil on this thing is like four inches. And again, we see this, the bevel on this one starts here and you flip it up and you've got a good half inch between the two plunges, which I mean, it doesn't really matter on a blade like this, but it just kind of shows its craftsmanship. That's a good flex to it though. This one doesn't have any rust apparent, unlike this one interesting Colombian I uh, so far I'm not impressed with the quality let's see how straight I didn't check the straightness of this blade actually uh, it's not perfectly straight nope not at all actually it's got a pretty bad bend would you be able to see this at all on the both of these are not straight not even close let's see if you look straight down you can see this one goes off to the left See in this one, this one is straight, but it's just wavy. It's got a really wavy blade on there, which I will say getting these things straight in a heat treat is, uh, it, it takes some skill or some really fat quench plates. Yikes. Yikes. All right. Well, let's see. Like this one is not even sharp. This one at least has an edge, but it's just a straight <laughs> burr on it. But that will come off. This one literally needs to go back to the grinder and get get back on. I mean, you can see. I can see. I don't know if you will see that. But these edges don't even meet yet. Like, it's not finished. Not even remotely. Uh, nowhere. I take it back. Right here, they actually do meet. So you've got slight. You can feel it's a little bit sharper up here. This is completely dull. I mean, just nothing. All right. <laughs> now I'm trying to see why I can buy five of these for 35 bucks shipped. All right. I need to pull it out. Whoa. Okay. Kind of a strange shape on that one. It's almost like a parang. It's got some, uh, what are they called? Not flutes, but folders. Here, that could be for some added strength, or it could be for some lightness, maybe a little bit of both. Is this Colombian? This one actually has a wooden handle, which is nice to see. Spear and Jackson, it doesn't sound super Colombian, but I don't know, it could be. Spear and Jackson. I'm going to have to look that up and see who makes Spear and Jackson. This is interesting. If you look, it actually has a tapered tang, not a tapered tang, tapered towards the edge here. So this is much thinner than here, which is kind of cool to see. It has, again, that same, I wonder if this is just a thing. I got, I'm not super familiar with machetes, but all these have just a huge fuller. I mean, you're talking four, five inches. And then again, plunge on this starts here, you flip it over. And this one's got an inch between between plunge lines. Yeah, you definitely won't be seeing that coming off the blade of for me. And dang, look at this, guys. This is... Ooh, I need to zoom on this one. It doesn't come to an edge. These aren't finished. Can you... You're not going to be able to see that. All right. These literally aren't coming to an edge. This has... A ways to go before there's even anything remotely edge-like. So up here, they, there is an edge, but down here, 
from the very plunge all the way to right here is not finished. It is not even remotely coming to an edge. Yikes. Yikes. That just wouldn't cut. It just wouldn't cut anything. Huh. That is, these have got to be seconds or something. Something that didn't pass quality control. That's my new guess. These have got to be seconds. These are just rough. How could that pass quality control? I mean, it's not done yet. It is not done. Okay, let's move on. These two look like they've got the same handle. I wonder if I got two of the same ones. It's like a... That's kind of interesting. It's almost the antithesis of this one. Not quite. It's like a hook blade. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Is it made by the same people? No, it's British. Original British steel. MOB even sharp. Made in something something England. So this one's definitely not Colombian. Which leads me to believe that this one is probably not Colombian either. I don't know if that's better or worse. Again, not a straight blade on this one. Is this one straight? Uh, no, no. <laughs> None of these are perfectly straight. You can see wobbles down the blade, which, you know, don't affect performance, but it just kind of shows the craftsmanship. At least this one is finished grinding. It actually comes to an edge on this one. This might be the best one, actually, for what I'm after out here, because I'm actually trying to cut slightly larger branches you know maybe half inch to one inch in diameter they're dead so i just want to be able to whack them off i've been using an axe but sometimes when you're going fast it's hard to get the exact hit that you're looking for so i'm hoping that this will whack them off a little bit faster i just said whack them off didn't i let's not say that again <laughs> all right last one let's see what we got it's gonna be the same definitely has the same handle as that one so my guess is it's british JMK, this one's not JMK, this is MOB. Uh, so, I don't know, different brand name, but probably from the same factory. They got it. This is the exact same handle shape, handle material, different brands. I don't know, I'm skeptical on that one. All this says is JMK. Kind of got some pitting towards this. Kind of a, a strange. This one might work well for what I'm after, too, actually. Not straight. These are not, none of these are straight. This one's got a pretty decent warp going off. If you're holding it straight, going off to the left, pretty decent warp. This top section is not sharpened, not that you'd need it to be. This back section, I almost wish that it had a small section right here sharpened. I'll probably actually do that myself. Sharpen this back right here so you can turn it around and use that if you needed to. Whoa, so look at the, the fuller on this. Not quite as long as the others, but the grind, the plunge, starts here. And again, you have a nice, oh man, over an inch, you know, inch and a quarter between the two grinds. Uh, it's not, God, the quality on these is just rough. This one at least is better than some where it actually comes to an edge. There's a section right here where it's not coming to an edge. And then where it does, it's got a big burr. You can see here they didn't take the grind line all the way to the tip. The tip has actually been burnt from grinding on this side because they went almost like a uh, chisel grind from here. Yikes, these are rough. But there they are. I think only two of these are Colombian. Um, this one is for sure English because it says made in England. This one has the wood handle, but it doesn't say where it's made. This one has got to be English too. Even though it doesn't say anything on it, it's got the exact same handle and rivets, I mean, down to a T as this English one. Whoa, $35, is it worth it? I mean, probably. If it, as long as this steel has a decent heat treat, then I can come in and I can fix all these bevels. If you didn't have the ability to fix any of these bevels, it would suck. Honestly, I'd be disappointed. <laughs> I would be like, these are unusable. Especially, is it this one? 
Yeah, and this one is unusable. There is zero edge. You have a straight, like, you know, a couple thou of an inch of thickness here of the stock that's not even, they're not even coming together. So rough. Yikes. Wow. Yeah. Completely unimpressed with the quality of these. And this is, I mean, my first knife that I ever, ever made is better than all of these put together. <laughs> but that's okay. I will fix these and I will... And I'll get some use out of them. Hopefully, we'll see. I, I'm going to go to the grinder right now, actually. I'm going to fix up the edge, probably on just one for now. I'm probably going to try this one. Because I think this might have the best effect on the branches that I'm after. So I'm going to go touch up this edge. I'm going to start whacking. i got to stop saying whacking. I really do. Um, lopping off some of the branches on these trees. So I'm in the shop on this grinder. I have a 240 grit belt. This one had the best edge out of the box, which actually works for me because I think that this shape is probably the most apt to do what I'm looking to do. You know, it's not gonna cut through light brush. It's gonna go through slightly thicker limbs. And I think that'll do nice. I'm gonna touch this up. I'm gonna use the slack of the belt right here. Give a slight convex edge, nothing too crazy. You see it got burnt <laughs> as they're grinding from this side. It got burnt right there. So the heat tree on that section is spent. I don't think I'm gonna grind this to a point. I don't really need a point right there. Just something to get caught on if I ever make a sheath for this. So, on the grinding. This belt is moving nice and slow, so it should keep the heat down. You gotta use the edge of the belt to get around this radius. If you try and keep it flat, it just hits on two spots. That's why I hate recurves, honestly. It's such a bear to sharpen. Yeah, I can feel a burr on the other side of the bevel. So I'm gonna switch it over now. Knock off that burr. Should be as sharp as I need it. We got this edge good enough for now, and this is a ceramic rod. I'm just gonna knock off that burr. Yeah, not terribly sharp. But it will work. So this one here is a good example. We're not quite down to the floor. However, we are too close to the ground where if we got a fire, it's a high chance that these are going to catch. So, the goal is to, <laughs> there we go. This one's a little bit thicker, that one's like an inch and a half. So they're dead, so they're not too bad, but all right one last go you'll notice that these ones are a lot thinner um, the axe a lot of times will just bend it so you hit these with an axe and they'll actually just bend instead of cut which is why i really was hoping that this would be better one of the issues you're running into is you really can't get a full swing because all these branches above you will catch the blade so you have to do these short choppy 
short choppy strokes that just aren't doing it, but <laughs> but that works pretty well. If you can get in there. There we go. That's working better. That's more like how I thought it was gonna go. It works. It hurts your hand though. You can definitely feel that ridge. You need to take care of that because it digs in. When you hit, this is rubbing, it's pinching hard. But that was more like how I was hoping that this would work. That was actually not too bad. Like I said, if you try and hit these little tiny twigs with an ax, they are more likely to bend and you just start digging into the tree. How about the edge? How's it holding up? And I will say that there are no huge dents in the edge, no big rolls. It's not too bad. It's holding up just as you'd hope it would. The other thing that we have out here that are kind of annoying to remove these things called bitter bushes, an invasive species. The insurance company actually required us to remove every single bitter bush within a hundred foot radius of our house. And let me tell you, that was a multi-day, multi-day issue. Um, the problem is, you can't. There are too thick to use loppers, and they're kind of dangerous to use a chainsaw in there because the chain will get wrapped up. And all these, so what we were doing is using like pickaxes and axes to get at the root ball and whack it. I'm wondering if these will go through. I don't think that they will though, let's find out. <laughs> ah, it does actually. That's actually not bad. That works pretty well, way better than the trees. Better than I thought I was going to do. Once it starts getting to these thicker portions down here, it, uh, it's not wanting to go through. But then you might be able to come in with the axe and do a little bit easier job. Yeah, that's not bad at all. That's probably the easiest way of removing them so far that I've found. I just realized I cut down the wrong one. I was supposed to cut down this one. <laughs> so it's a little bit out of frame. We'll do one more. Let's see how it does here. It is a nice clean cut where it hits. That's pretty good. Slip the ground loose. Too bad. These are a bear to move, to remove. Like I said, the axe just bounces off the roots. Chainsaw gets caught up. That might be the best way to get rid of those. We just got back in from lopping, not whacking, and was it worth the thirty-five dollars for five of these very poorly finished machetes? I don't know, because if you go to Harbor Freight, you can get their machete for five or six dollars. I think it's probably only six or seven, and I definitely have seen them go on sale four or five. And from memory, now it's been probably a decade or so since I've had one, but from memory, I want to say that the overall build quality of that Harbor Freight machete was better than every single one of these. Now again, I think that these are all seconds. 
I don't think that the majority of these would have passed quality control, especially these English made ones. Uh, if you'll notice, look at this already. <laughs> Can you hear that? <laughs> the rivets on this crappy plastic handle are already coming loose. Um, the fitment on this is horrible. You really need to wear gloves because this sharp edge right here just digs into your hand. Would I do it again? Maybe. It was really fun pulling them out and seeing the different shapes because it's not something that you typically see uh, in stores available. You, know, you can go to Walmart and you can get a machete there and they won't have all these, these different shapes to them. So that was kind of fun. Was that worth the $35 novelty? Probably, probably. The overall rating on these though is, is bad. I don't think they're very good, <laughs> honestly. They're so poorly made. No, not one of them had them where the bevels were remotely straight or even came to a an edge. So many of them didn't even have an edge, which is, it's, you, you can't make a machete, or make a knife, make a, any sort of edge tool where the edge doesn't even come to a point. I mean, it just is really a blunt piece of steel at that point. So that's rough. Every single one of these needs uh, work, a lot of work, honestly. So as far as rating goes, I'd give these like a two star out of five, you know, a three, four out of 10. They're rough, they are rough. But would I do it again? Maybe, like I said, the novelty of it is kind of cool. So I don't know, I had a lot of fun. Hope you guys had some fun watching. Thanks. Take care.